Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Concrete with the Hosses. Uh, nice uh, maintenance video coming on today. Look at this. First time all summer. My truck, you can see the floor mat. I showed this in a video a couple of weeks ago, and I had tools and, a, and material piled over here. Almost, we couldn't get the doors closed. So I got that all cleaned out. Uh, a couple more things to do here to get this. I'm gonna pull this down back and get my truck emptied out. Uh, we're having a problem with the power buggies. We were using it the other day and we used it for about 10 minutes and it would stall. And as we tried to keep using it, now we're down to about two minutes, it would stall a lot. So um, I did get it fixed. Uh, I wanna go over that with you, uh, how I repaired it. It was a nice, quick, uh, fairly simple fix once I diagnosed it and maybe it'll help you out of a jam sometime. Uh, we had two issues with them. I'll go over both of those with you as well as some servicing on them. Hope you enjoy the video. Stay tuned. So I think I'm on the right track. I have the fuel turned on and I disconnected the fuel filter and it's just trickling out. Just dripping out ever so slightly. Okay, with the fuel filter off and the fuel turned on, that's how fast the fuel's coming out. So it should be flowing that fast through the filter. Definitely more than a trickle. So I just went out to the uh, local hardware store and got an inline filter. Now notice there's an arrow on here. Hopefully you can see that. It shows you the direction of the flow of the fluid. Is there one on each side? Anyways, there's an arrow right here and right here. So this is just an inline filter from Wix. Pretty common filter to get. And I just matched up the size. Get my nut driver on there, snug that in. Now I'll go ahead and turn the fuel back on. You can see how it's flowing right through there. And right out. <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure that was the problem. Let me get this hooked up. We'll take it for a test drive. Let's use my pliers. This has a squeeze compression ring clamp. Turn the fuel back on. Check it for leaks. There we go. We'll get that started. Okay, so it started up pretty easy. Still don't see any leaks. Let's take it for a test drive. Yesterday I made it to the end of the, almost to the end of the driveway. Double checking for leaks. Okay, so that was a nice easy fix. Nothing leaking. It appears to be good. Uh, that's on me. That is bad maintenance. I should have had that changed. Um, I have, let me show you what I have. So this is what I do every year. I have these all month on one page calendars. And I have them going back probably 20 years and I just hang a new one on the wall each year I'm gonna need some longer nails here pretty soon but this is where my maintenance starts um, usually December and January February March this is where I get all my maintenance on so I just log everything the skid loaders here's the power buggies that I did oil fuel air so I did change the fuel filter so that's just within one year that clogged up. So something like that we fill out of gas cans. So there may have been some dirt in the gas can from sitting in the back of the truck. So might be a good idea to have an extra fuel filter 
in the glove box so that if that happens on the job site that'd be a quick quick fix and we wouldn't lose any time but that's how i keep track of everything here's all my uh excavators those skid loaders mini excavator my dump trucks uh, everything gets serviced every year and that's how i keep track of if i miss anything and then of course we have our uh utility trucks in here as well tommy and steve's and here's my 550 notice how i did my 550 first okay so the last thing is this is giving us a problem with this doesn't rotate actually it doesn't rotate all the time There's the switch. Sometimes if you give it a little bump. You can get it to go. But I'm going. I'm going to start with a test light on this switch and see if the problem's in the control. Because you can see how this gets full of dirt and debris. The dirty hands working it dirt falls in there that could be the problem <coughs> excuse me <coughs> since it doesn't work all the time it only works some of the time i'm leaning towards the switch if it didn't work any of the time i would still start there but it could be something else uh, just like the fuel filter you start at the the easiest stuff cleaning the bowl Second inline filter. If it wasn't the inline filter, I would go to the fuel pump next. Uh, you just work your way down the line. So I'm going to start at this and move to the control mechanism in there and see if something's turning, not hooked, but it isn't because it's working some of the time. So you just sort of analyze it a little bit. Uh, that's all on this for today. Be back soon. So I finally made it back into the garage here. I uh, worked I was focused on this switch I thought for sure it had to be this dirt and debris getting in there um, so I was checking it with my Kawitz voltage tester set on DC uh, checking I have good power in and I also have good power out uh, every time I work the switch every direction left or right um, it just seems to be working good uh, so I don't believe that's the problem. So moving on, uh, I'll start it up here and show you in a minute. I'll just talk real quick. Uh, we have one connection here. Everything felt nice and tight. I didn't see any wires um, chewed from a mice or a chipmunk. I'm tracing it all the way up here into this compartment. So once I remove this cover, um, there's three limit switches. Uh, left and right are up here, and I've messed with these before adjusting them. Uh, they were good. And then I took this cover off. I didn't even know this switch was here. I just figured, ah, let's take this off and see what's behind here. Now, there's a, there's a limit switch. And you can see how the wheel is just worn flat. So, that is supposed to roll on this rim and tell the system that everything is good. So anyways, I'll start it up and I'll show you. Let's see if I can get that spun. There we go. You can see that flat spot. So that flat spot is just enough to turn that switch open, which doesn't allow the turntable to turn. So with that being like that, let me show you. I'll have to start it up, it'll get a little bit noisy. Now, just as I touch this, you'll see it'll turn and then it'll stop. So you can see I'm back to flat. Now if I put something in here, um, holding that switch closed. Now you can see it works nice and free. So, 
I ran down to Knickerbocker and picked up a new switch. I'm going to go ahead and change this out. If I couldn't get a switch, I was going to tape this closed and run it like that. Since I could get a switch, um, I'll go ahead and replace it because I always want to put things back the way they're supposed to be. Uh, two bolts, switch this out. And both of my buggies are about the same age and they're both acting in the exact same way. So once I get done servicing this, I'll bring that one in and I guarantee that switch will be the same way. So I did get two while I was down there. Uh, so if you have uh, buggies um, eight to ten years old in the turntables, the bucket isn't rotating the way it's supposed to be, look at that switch. It might be your issue. All right, I'll get that changed and I'll show you a little bit more on servicing this. So with it all warmed up, I'll go ahead, take off the oil filter and start draining the oil and all that will drain out while I'm working on that switch. Kind of doing two things at once. My wife says, my wife says I can't multitask, huh? How about that, Donna? These machines are real nice to drain the oil the engine, they plumb in a drain line and mount it right here behind the track. So it's real simple. We get a 14 millimeter wrench or ratchet. Lefty Lucy. And you can slide an oil pan right underneath there. And voila, we'll let that drain. While we, uh, well, I changed the oil or uh, change that switch. These hold about a quart, somewhere in that. So you can sort of see what comes out of it and gauge what to put back in it. All right, onto the switch. Okay, here we go. So these are a little bit longer than all the other bolts. So I'll keep these separate and make sure I put them right back on this attachment. Everything else is the same length throughout this whole machine. So I just put them in my magnetized tray and that way uh, you don't lose anything. <laughs> so many times you just set them here and there. And it's like, where'd that bolt go? Where'd that one go? So I put everything in the dish. And it's a magnet dish, so nothing spills out of it. And then if I get too many different groups, I have other dishes over there. Then I'll bring them over. I know, it's a mess. All this is gathered up. All that gets pitched. Working on it. Okay. So, as I took those out, I, the switch dropped out here's the plug let me just wiggle this out and bring it on up so you can see it's just on a little bracket i can undo those screws if i could just change this wheel the switch is still good you can hear it working in there so if i couldn't get this switch i was just going to wire tie that shut that's a closed switch, that's open switch. Close it and do without it. Since I can get the switch, like I said, we always wanna put it back the way it's supposed to be. So you can see oil is all done dripping. So I just take a little bit of clean oil and put it in the machine, in the engine compartment. Um, and I just put just a splash, maybe not even a half a quart, not even a half a quart. So now, with that running through, drain plug is still out. Give it a second, you'll see the drips will start picking up, oil will start to flow out and then clean oil will come out. And you get a little bit more dirt out of that engine, now you're gonna save some life of that engine. I've been doing that for years. P2 
people say it's a waste of oil. I disagree. I say get all the dirt out of that engine you can. You can see how much cleaner that oil looks coming out now compared to when it first started. So we'll let that drain. Uh, one other thing I do, uh, change the filter. I already had that loose. I'm not that strong. So my new filter, I fill it up with oil and then put it on. When it comes to the engine compartment, it just can't be clean enough. Just fill that up with oil. Make sure you wet the rubber gasket before you go ahead and uh, tighten this filter on. And some of this oil will leak out as you're putting it in, but a lot of it will stay in. So, so take your finger and wetten that rubber gasket. Now that rubber gasket will slip as it tightens. If you don't do that, they might peel out of its seat and go crooked and then create a leak. So lastly, take a clean paper towel and wipe the housing clean. Any debris that's on that ring, you want to get off of there. Okay, nice and clean. I don't know if you can see it in there. Kind of tucked around that corner. Okay, let's get this filter on. Tough camera angle in here. As always, hand tighten, and then give it one turn. There we go, snug. Look at it, I got Baldwin right here, and give it a full turn. A lot of vibration on these machines. Okay. Okay, filter's nice and tight. A little bit of oil draining out, <clears throat> and you see just how nice and clean it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and put the drain plug in now. I took a paper towel and wiped any debris off of this. Here's where I drop it right in the oil pan. Usually. Okay. Move this out of the way before I drop the wrench in it. Go ahead and snug that up. Get it snug. A couple little bumps. Good. Okay. Now, always, always, always do this very next. Add the oil. Don't walk away from this machine empty. Uh, put oil in it now. That way, if somebody comes in here, doesn't know there's no oil in it, needs to move it, starts it, disaster. So, oil now. Okay, we'll let everything settle. And in my dirty oil pan, I have just over a quart of oil. So I start there, and it's easier to add to it than have to drain a little bit out. Okay, so I just put another half quart of oil in. So I let it set for probably two minutes. Dipstick clean. And there it is, right there, right in the center. So I'm going to put a splash more in it. Okay. 
Good, we're just below that dot. All right, we want it oil nice and clean looking. Good for another year. All right. So switch is all done. Oil's good. Move my phone. Check for leaks. Hitting the switch. No hesitation. So I'm looking at the belts, everything looks good, engine sounds good, I'm missing the cover right here, I gotta find that, hopefully it's laying around here somewhere, that's just a breather for the hydraulic tank, here's a hydraulic window, I'll check my hydraulic fluid level, air filter next, and then grease it. Nothing dripping. And then good. Nothing dripping down here. Okay. I'll go ahead and get the covers back on as I do those final things. Uh, so that's a nice easy fix for a problem we've been having for about a year. Finally got it in the shop to look at. So limit switch. If you're having the same issue check there okay I just replaced this a couple of months ago and it's real clean so I'm just gonna let this go and I might replace it mid-season uh, I'm not gonna waste the money on that right now when that is so clean so I'll leave this air filter go so I'll start getting these panels back in okay there's a window and there's a red dot right there we just want to fill that hydraulic tank up to that window level it's just a little bit low and there it comes right now okay so that is all of my maintenance I'll start putting my panels back on. Now, these panels get taken off once a year. Some of them more, like if I have to jumpstart that, but whatever, once a year. So I just want to take these bolts and just put a little bit of anti-seize on them before I put them back in. That way, they don't get all rusty. And when I go to take them out, they'll come out instead of breaking. I just put the panels on, as you may or may not have noticed. I take the, the bolt and I just get a little bit of anti-seize on it and get them all started. And then I impact them in. And I just snug them. Okay, the last thing I need to do is grease this machine. Most important thing you could do with your machinery is keep it greased. Uh, every swivel point, grease fitting. One thing I don't like about it, I started saying a minute ago, but the camera died. I just switched cameras. You have to take these bolts, the studs off, these nuts off. They're like a cap nut. So take that off, put in a grease fitting, grease it, take that all back out, and then put this back on. The new style we just got has grease fittings on each one of these. Uh, unfortunately, this is how they designed this one. So I'll show you how you do that and get through this quickly. 
I like to just do one at a time. That way nothing moves. Keep everything right in line where it's supposed to be. Take these off. Put in a zerk. Couple shots of grease, and you do this quickly. getting pretty good that took me about eight minutes to go all the way across the bottom there's a grease fitting underneath the upper front and middle don't forget the swivel here in the middle grease that up real good and that is about it a couple grease fittings on the dump I was trying to make a lid for this I cannot find that anywhere uh, so I at least have that on there. If we need the buggy, we'll use it, uh, but I need to get a cap for that. And that is about it for servicing on the power buggies. So a lot more machinery to get in here. Stay with us. Talk to you soon. And lastly, lastly, excuse me, very important. Hit this grease fitting right here. That's for the turntable. Okay, side two is all done. Every single one took grease real nice. Um, last thing I should talk about is how to tighten these tracks. There's, you can't see it, it's right here. It's all full of dirt and concrete. Um, loosen this nut, put a ratchet on here and loosen this. I keep these anti-seized up real good. If you have to change the track on the job site, we had to do that once this summer. Uh, keep these anti seized up and you can do it with just a crescent wrench and very quickly. Uh, what you want to look for, notice how I have the machine tilted up, all the weight is off this track. The lugs just drop out of the carriage. Um, you don't want it too loose where it's going to flop and come off, but you want a little bit of slack in there uh, so that you don't wear out the rollers. Uh, so that's a good gauge of it. Just where the cogs are right below the rollers is, is what I always go by. So tell me if I'm wrong on that. But I think that's a, um, a gauge that everybody looks at. Working on the buggy still. One thing I want to mention is you can see all these leaves and debris right in here. Uh, that tells me that there's a mouse uh, building a nest in there. So, I always get these blocks of mouse killer and just set right in there. That way, hopefully, they chew on that rather than the wires. Another thing I started doing is I got this rodent repellent spray. Uh, I just used this last year for the first time. And it seemed to work pretty good. I just spray in the compartments. I spray all the lines. Anything that a mouse might want to chew on. All those wires. Who knows, if it puts them somewhere else, then it's doing its job. 
So I thought you might like to see that. We park a lot of stuff for the winter and it just sits for about three months. So might keep the pesky, pesky little critters out of there. Okay, I just pulled the buggy out. No nuts and bolts left. Uh, just a bunch of dirt left behind. So I'll go ahead and get the garage all cleaned up here and get ready for the next piece. Uh, one thing I need to do, uh, we got a new buggy and I made my homemade splash guards. So I'm gonna make another set of these. I'll show you how I do it. Uh, hopefully this video is not getting too long. We can attach it into this. Uh, if not, if it's not in this video, come back and see it because this is worth uh, taking a look at. You don't want to have to go buy them. They're too pricey. You can make them for about $15. It used to be 10. COVID set in, went up to 15. <laughs> so, come on back and see us. Thanks again.